My name is Dave Smith, I'm the Marine Science Project Lead at Mars and we're currently off the coast of Bontesua in Spimbalon Day in the Coral Triangle. Hello everyone, let's go for a dive. So coral reefs are by far the most biodiverse uh, marine systems on the planet and when you first uh, dive onto a reef over Hope then what you see is these amazing reef stars and these reef stars, the structure below, are the sort of the module structure that we use to restore. Corals grow on those reef stars, you can see here a coral attaching itself to a reef star and then growing over the reef star and the reef star then just integrates into the natural reef and lots of different species can do this which is really important for restoration even some of the massive corals we see here a coral called lobophilia um, it's quite rare to see those in a restoration setting and corals provide the habitat structure that supports all the different fish species we know reefs can can support over 25 percent of marine life and here we have lots of chromis they belong to the damsel fish group and they're hiding inside the coral and that's a really important component of coral reefs that they provide this physical structure lots of different species hiding within amongst the coral popping up now and again to feed and then when a predator comes along or a diver in our case they hide back in much larger body fish also found on reefs this is a parrot fish you can see the fused beak those fused beak are actually teeth which are fused together they graze the algae providing a really important surface to stop the algae out competing the coral and then the coral can flourish and support lots of different fish biomass which is so important for food security now you're probably looking at the fish here, but what I'm looking at are the corals. Look in the background, those beautiful table corals, branching corals on the right, all belonging to the most diverse genus of corals called Acropora. And they're really important, they're the fastest growing species and provide much of the structure um, to the reef. But of course, there's lots of other different fish species as well and different life. This is a shrimp fish and really quite an unusual fish that actually floats upside down. And the mouth of this fish, you can see, is pointing down and most of the times these fish are found actually hiding in the spines of an urchin but they can also hide in amongst the coral and use that beak or that pointy beak to pick out plankton from the water um, so when you look at a coral reef community you're looking at a busy city underwater the corals provide the structure or the housing if you like and then lots of small fish living in amongst the corals and the bigger fish uh, preying on those smaller fish but reefs are not just obviously home to uh, fish there's lots of other types of organisms including some really charismatic organisms that you'll know or some charismatic species and any moment now you're going to see a beautiful turtle pop up which uh, I think of one of the most majestic things that you can see on a reef. You know, on land these things are bulky and can hardly crawl, but you can see here this green turtle, just the simple uh, stroke of its forelimbs is just gliding effortlessly across the reef. It's obviously spotted us and has taken to go a little bit deeper, we can't follow it. But, you know, turtles can stay underwater for 20 to 40 minutes on average. And now and again, if you're floating on the surface, getting ready for a dive, you might be lucky enough to see a turtle pop his head up with a big gasp, taking a full lung of air and going back down. And when they're sleeping, actually, they can stay underwater between four, five, six, maybe seven hours or so. And like many other um, species on a reef, all turtle species are endangered. This one, not so much, actually, um, but it's still threatened. This is a green turtle, feeds on seagrass beds, and seagrass beds and reefs are interconnected. Um, turtles really heavily dependent on tropical beaches where they breed, and we've got some problems there, of course, because of the overdevelopment of those areas. But I couldn't catch this turtle when it gets going. So as well as the vertebrates, we saw a turtle, we've seen fish, you get lots of beautiful invertebrates. This is a feather duster worm, a sabellid worm, and they're actually light sensitive. If I put my hand over the top of that feather duster, where it will sh shoot back inside. It doesn't want its gills or its tentacles to be nipped by fish. On this shot here on the right, we have sponges, which are like the hoovers of the sea. They're sort of mopping up all the organic material. And we have feather stars on the, on the far left, those black feather stars. They're a type of echinoderm, which you can see a red version here as well. And actually, they, you can find those swimming on a reef during nighttime. But the stars of the show for sure for me and the thing that provides all the structure are these reef building corals and when we do restoration this is what we're aiming to do and it's putting these reef building these city building corals back into situ this again is a, a, a close-up of an acropora coral they're very closely related to other species um, which don't provide that structure but also provide habitat this is a sea whip 
Um, there's lots of little tentacles on those sea whips which are feeding organic material. I love this shot because you can see how busy a reef is. A reef is a really noisy place. All these fish would be chirping and chipping away, signaling to each other, hiding amongst the coral. Look at that beautiful Acropora. Um, making a living. There are lots of different damselfish here. Damselfish are really important. They, they sort of create territories and clean up seaweed from the seabed and from the reef uh, structure itself, making room for the corals to grow. Bottom right there actually is a nasty one. That's a fire coral. It's not quite um, a reef building coral, but it reduces structure, but it can also sting you. And this is what happens when you see reef degradation. Look down on the bottom there and you can see these rubble areas. Look, it's actually devoid of life. You don't really see much going on there. And that's primarily, again, because most of the habitat has been lost. And as soon as you get back onto a reef where there's reef building coral, you start to see other organisms coming in. And this is a, I think this looks like quite a grumpy fish, actually. This is a Maori wrasse, a red banded wrasse. It's quite an old one because the red's very bright and the head is quite round. And that's what they look like when they get a bit old. It has uh, four canine teeth, which is used to crunch up shells and the exoskeletons of crustacea and shrimps and it sort of cruises around generally looking a little bit grumpy. This fish can go up to about 40 centimetres or so in size so it's a bit of a beast on a reef. Obviously you get much larger species coming down onto a reef now and again feeding on all the other organisms that you see um, here in this image, most of them of which are damselfish. But it shows you again how different fish species utilise the reef. This is a, a much more a sort of matured reef. On the left you can see the crinoids and the feather stars. They're hanging out on that big massive coral. That coral on the left there is called parietes. That only grows about two or three millimetres a year. But sometimes you'll see colonies over 19 metres or so in diameter. They're the ones that sort of provide the big structure, the long term structure. They're really resilient to climate change, but they don't provide all the finer structure for the smaller species. And a restored reef really requires the branching corals that you see in the bottom there and also the massive corals. It's a mixed community that you need. But once you've got that and once you've put that back into the system, then the system will naturally recover. And that's the art of restoration. You'll then get this big sort of tabulate corals and the fan corals at the bottom there. Wow, look at that. Look at that on the left hand side. You see uh, that sort of spotted fish going off to the left. That's a intermediate sweet lips. Really, really funky when they're quite juvenile. They mimic poisonous um, flatworms so they don't get eaten. This is a much more classic coral. This is a Pacillopora. This is one sp uh, species that we actually put back onto the reef. And you can see these little damselfish darting in about, thinking of predators come. So it hides back into the branches. Um, and when those predators sort of go on their way, they'll pop back up and start suspension feeding in the water column. So again, it's a really nice shot to show what actually, how different fish species utilize a reef. Now you all know this one, this is a clownfish or an enemy fish and actually Hope Reef is at the centre of the world's coral diversity um, and you've got more species of clownfish existing there than anywhere else in the world. And these clownfish are actually rubbing themselves up against the tentacles, covering them in the mucus to prevent them being stung by the anemone. The anemone doesn't recognise it as a foreign body. And actually out in Hope and other areas what you'll find is a couple of different species of anemone fish sharing that one big anemone. The weaker species will be on the outside, which is a bit more dangerous to be because the anemone protects the anemone fish from um, predators. And in return, the anemone fish will sort of fight away any of the potential predators of the anemone. Sort of, they're really bossy fish, actually. They come out all aggressive and they look all hard in that sense. I like this shot. This is a shot that shows a mixed community and again shows how busy a reef community can be. Look at all, there's probably about 20, 30 different species of fish hiding away there. And um, the smaller fish, um, the chromis as we call them, uh, darting around, staying very close to the reef because that's the best place to be. Um, you don't want to be up in the water column where there could be a big predator. Fire coral coming down through the centre again. You know, the reefs are all about physical structure. It provides habitat. That habitat supports small fish. Small fish are eaten by big fish and the big fish are food for local communities. But the actual physical structure of the reef as well attenuates wave energy and protects coastal environments from storm damage and uh, high intensity storms. Again, on the right-hand side, devoid of life because there's no coral. This is a quite flourishing Acropora bed. It's of Hope Reef. You can see how vibrant the colours are. And you actually see a lovely little juvenile black and blue cleaner fish, which is dotting around looking for its clients.
Thank you, everyone. And remember, hope grows. The more you watch the ads, the more you plant new reefs.